So I'm gonna be demoing how to wax your legs today. There are um, three different leg surfaces. We have the full leg, which is from the toes all the way up to the thigh. We have the lower leg, which is essentially just the above the knee, all the way down to the toes. And then we have the upper leg, which is going to be the knee all the way up to the thigh. So if you're doing this at home, I'm gonna take you through the service and teach you a few tips to make it easier and to be more successful with the hair removal. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is wear some gloves. If you don't have gloves because you're waxing at home, you can go on Amazon, buy some vinyl gloves because trust me when I tell you, it's going to help the service so much that wax won't be adhering to your dry fingertips. Instead, you'll be able to just focus on what you're doing rather than getting the wax on your fingers or on your manicure because if you're wearing polish, the wax adheres to polish significantly. So in order to avoid all that stuff, just buy some uh, vinyl gloves online and it's gonna help your service tremendously, okay? So after that, you wanna make sure that your area is set up for success. So you wanna make sure if you don't want any wax on the carpet, if you don't want any wax on the floor, lay something on the ground, whether it's just like an old beach towel or like an old bed sheet that you don't care about, make sure that you lay it on the ground so that it can protect your surface from any drippage that might happen during the service, because it will, especially if you're learning. And make sure that you have an area where you can prop your leg up so that you're able to target the area that you're trying to get the hair removal off of. And when you have your warmer, make sure that it's accessible so that you're just an arm reach away from your wax when you go to pull and apply. Once your station is set up, then you're good to go. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to prep the area. And I'm gonna be prepping my skin today with the Nova Wax Cleansing Gel. I do have some lotion on my legs, so I'm gonna pump a generous amount into my hand, directly on my hand. What was that, like a dozen pumps? I don't know, but I've got a lot of lotion on my legs because I do wax them. And so you wanna make sure that you're hydrating. I'm just gonna pull myself up here. All right, so I'm gonna rub the cleansing gel all over my full leg. Get a good rub. It's gonna focus on breaking up all that residue. And then you're gonna get a paper towel. You're gonna get a paper towel and you're just gonna rub all that excess moisture, all that residue that the cleansing gel was working to take off. Draw that up, and while this leg is drying, you're gonna do the other leg. So get a generous amount of the cleansing gel. Lather it all over your legs as if you were just applying lotion. Making sure you're like rubbing it in and breaking up all that residue from your lotion, sweat, dirt, bacteria from the day. Prepping your skin before a service is really going to set you up for much, much better results. If you're like, I'm good, I showered this morning, I'm not going to prep my skin, it's not going to, it's not going to be a good outcome. Trust me, I know because I've done it. So take that extra step to ensure that you aren't wasting your product. After you've cleansed your legs, something that I want to share with you guys that's so amazing is the dual action oil. The legs are very dry. Everyone's skin is pretty dry during the summer because it's just a lot on your skin and if you're not moisturizing enough, your skin's gonna feel really, really dry. If your skin is super dry, when you go to lay that wax, the wax is going to focus on nourishing and giving moisture to your skin. So your skin's gonna start absorbing all that moisture from the wax, causing it to dry and crack. A one way that you can avoid this is if you get a little bit of oil, not too much, one little spritz, a little bit of oil, because if you do too much on the skin, what's gonna end up happening is it's going to make the wax roll, all right? So a little goes a long way. In fact, I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I did one spray, but I wanna rub a little bit of that off. I'm gonna rub it together, warm it up in my hands, and I'm gonna focus on the driest areas on my leg, which would be the knee, the side of my calf here, my calf, my calf, not my farm animal. Um, because I get a lot of ingrowns that kind of are superficial ingrowns that are just under a thin layer of dead skin, but 
they grow this way so, because my skin's so dry. And then just like lightly brush it over your skin. What that's doing is it's creating a barrier between your skin and the wax. So now when you lay that wax down, the wax is gonna be like, oh, okay, I'm here to remove the hair, not to moisturize your skin. The oil is giving that moisture to your skin that is needed, and the oil is what's helping revitalize your skin, if you will. So, but remember, a little bit, a little bit. If you do too much, your wax is gonna roll and you're gonna be pissed off and you're gonna be like, did she sell me to do this? Cause you know, I get it. Sometimes you think, well, if I do a little bit more eye cream, it'll be better, but it's not. Okay, so now we are ready to wax. But if you're just waxing for the first time, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, an intro on proper strip application, okay? Don't be a hero and try to tackle this entire section of your leg. You will be unsuccessful. So we're gonna focus on doing smaller strips. Yes, it will take you a lot longer, but you'll have better results, all right? Um, so let's pull some wax from the warmer and get started. We're focusing on little strips, okay? And we're gonna start with our lower leg. This is what your wax stick should look like. Notice how it's a much smaller amount because we're focusing on smaller strips. I'm gonna start on the inside of my leg and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my skin taut just by pulling back lightly. I'm going to drop the wax and I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm just gonna gently glide it down. We're doing a smaller strip. Be sure that you're spreading that bad boy evenly throughout. And you're gonna create that lip Smooth any chunky areas out. I wish it was that easy for my waistline. And then you're gonna hold the skin taut down here, lift and slowly pull off, okay? You can see I didn't really use a lot of wax there, so my strip was a little bit thin, but because I had that oil, um, it, it didn't crack or break. If you're running into this issue a lot with the cracking and breaking, you're either not using enough wax or your skin's super, super dry and you need to give it a little bit of um, assistance with the oil. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys one more time on a different area of my leg. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of wax like here and I'm gonna drop it, cut it, cut it, cut it. And I'm going to just take my time and lay that strip. You don't have to go super fast, you have time. The wax is still warm. I'm gonna lift my stick up so that wax can naturally fall into a lip and then I'm gonna go back in and smooth any uneven parts out. Now that strip is ready for removal, okay? So don't do this and don't do that. Just remove the strip. Hold the skin taut here. Give it a little, give it a little flick of the wrist and then pull off like that. I don't go super duper fast like because A, it's a small strip. If it were a longer strip, I would have to follow through. But because it's just such a short strip, I'm going slower. Also, my hairs are so fine in texture because I've been waxing for years and years and years and years that if I go too fast on fine textured hair, I'll break it, okay? So let's do that one more time. Again, you don't need that much wax because if you're a beginner, you don't, you're having trouble probably pulling that much wax from the warmer. So don't worry if you're only able to get a little bit of wax on your stick, just focus on little strips for now. When you get to the base of the strip, lift the stick up, create that lip, go back around to smooth any uneven edges, and you're ready to remove that strip. Also, if you're waxing at home and this is your wax and this is your warmer, you do not have to use a new stick every time you apply a strip, okay? It's your wax warmer. So use that same stick over and over and over again until you can't. So I'm gonna show you how to get out of this situation if it happens to you. So if you can see here, my strip has cracked because it was uneven and it was just too thin and apparently I didn't put any oil there. So what I'm gonna do is instead of tugging at it and trying to uh, remove the strip, I'm just gonna fold it over, shiny side out. I'm gonna stick it back on the area that didn't come up. I'm just gonna lightly have it not come off, okay? So let's do it again. Boom, just go over that same area. 
And if you are, if you're applying wax to an area that you've already applied, you'll, you'll notice it's significantly hotter. Don't worry, it's not that the wax is getting hotter, it's just that your skin has become more sensitive because you've removed that top layer of dead skin cells. So there we go. Crisis averted, went in, removed that hair, no big deal, okay? So a real difficult area when you're doing the legs are the knees. The knees are like the driest point of our body besides our elbows. And when people get to this area of waxing, they're kind of stumped because like A, the wax is cracking and B, they don't know how to wax over this curve, whether you have really bony knees like I do or just, a, it's just a difficult area to target any way you look at it. So I'm gonna show you how to properly wax a knee and what to do if you run into some trouble. Okay, here we go. So with the knee, you're gonna need to get a lot of wax because it's such a dry area. So we're gonna get a nice, we're gonna get a nice heaping stick of wax. You're gonna bend the knee, not too much, just like that. I'm gonna cut the wax and I'm just gonna work all this wax in over my knee. Look how thick it is. And then I'm just gonna keep applying pressure, focusing on the growth area, wipe off that excess on there, and just work it in to the knee, like so. Remember, this is a thicker strip, so typically when I say, after your stick's been removed, you can remove the strip, not this one. This one's thicker, so it's gonna need a little bit of time to set. Not too much time, just a little bit. Okay. Once we do that, I'm not gonna remove the strip with one swift pull because that's just impossible. Like I said, the knee, it's got curves. She's curvilated. So you're just going to move it, uh, you're going to remove it in parts, all right? Almost like a, um, hmm, I don't know how to explain it in words, so I shall do it in sound. Duh, 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 duh. Do you know what I mean? Like that. So let's start lip and just like so beautiful and that's how you're gonna get those difficult areas I don't just do the one strip though I also do one going around because here you have growth that goes downward to the side this side so you can essentially do another strip going to the left and another strip going to the right this is a more advanced strip so don't kick yourself if you can't you know target this area get more wax and I'm gonna tilt my knee in start from the side curve that bad boy over like so you can do it put your back into it and uh, this is a little bit messy but that's okay nobody's perfect any strips and this is a very messy strip so let's see what happens when I remove the reason that kind of lifted like that um, because it's still kind of thick there I'm gonna show you now how to target areas that are a little more challenging to reach, like the back of your legs. So make sure that you have like a chair or something that you can prop your leg on, especially if you're waxing at home. So set yourself up for success, okay? Let me show you how I do the back of my leg. I'm gonna get a little bit of wax because when you get into this position, you start focusing on your movement and then this starts to slow down and you're gonna drip, okay? So I just prop my leg up and then I rotate my body and my leg and then I just kind of lean back. Now I know this isn't for everyone, but this is just how I've learned to do it over the years and I just bend at the waist. So it's a little bit of a stretch here. You don't really have to go super fast on that removal. The next movement is if the last one was too challenging, this one should be a little bit easier, I hope. 
okay? Again, you're gonna get a little bit of wax. You don't need that much because that'll happen. You'll drip on the floor. And if that's a rug or carpet, you wanna get in trouble. And then you're gonna sit down, prop your leg up, and you try to just pull the skin back as much as you can, drop the wax, and just kind of work it in like so. This one takes a little bit longer, but like I said, it's a little easier to target the hairs this way if you find that that last position was just too, too extreme. Wax extreme. Extreme waxing. <laughs> Just like that. After you've waxed, it's really important to hydrate. So I am going to do my hydrating lotion. A good hefty amount. We love some supple, luscious skin on your legs. Your at-home care is so important and it's just crucial to the overall results that you'll get from waxing. Believe it or not, when you're exfoliating every single day, you're breaking up that top surface of dead skin cells and you're hydrating. When that hair starts to regrow, what's gonna happen is you're not just conditioning and hydrating the skin, you're also doing it to the hairs. And this is important because if your skin is dry, your hair is going to be dry and it is just more prone to cracking and breaking so make sure that you're hydrating even during regrowth and even if you got hairy legs, hydrate those hairs because it will be just uh, easier to wax off. 